Hi everyone, welcome back to our Winging It 2023 quilt project. This week we are going to be combining some of the skills we've learnt in our earlier videos. So I will link our playlist at the top of the screen so that you can go and catch up if you want to. I'm just going to start by taking you around the resources on my table. I've got two of my 20 centimetre square quilt blocks and we're going to do a bit of cutting and piecing together to make one block. I've got a light blue and I've got my green texture fabric. I quite like this because it reminds me of grass so it's going to work really well for the block that we're going to make today. I've also got a selection of scraps. I've got some white which we've used in previous weeks. It's got a sort of floral pattern on it. Now as well as the white, I've also got some of my red and yellow spot fabric. A piece of brown that is out of the same charm pack that I used for the centre of the sunflower back in week four. I quite liked this one because it's got some details of red in it and I think it's going to bring together this block really nicely. I've also got a selection of threads here. These are all Anchor brand. So I've got blue, which is 130. 289, 025, 001, 255, 258, 480, 46 and I've also got black as well. I've also got my reel of polyester sewn thread. We're going to be doing some piecing and tacking. I've also got my paper scissors because we'll be using a bit of bondweb. It's not in shot but I have got it. I've got my embroidery scissors and I've got a selection of marking tools as well. So the first thing we're going to do is make our block background by piecing together sections of fabric. So I've got my cutting mat here and I've just positioned my blue square so that it's lined up with some of the thicker lines on my cutting mat. It does look a little bit of a funny shape. It's purely because of the angle of the camera. I promise it is square. The first thing I'm going to need is a piece that is 14 centimetres across. So I've pre-cut these blocks. I know that they're 20 centimetres deep and I want to follow the rule that I'm going to measure twice and cut once. We did this technique back in week three and I will link that video at the top of the screen just in case you need that detailed description of how to use a cutting mat. We're going to try not to use much measuring, but we are going to count twice. So as long as my block is lined up with that solid line, I'm going to count across 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And so I'm just going to double check that to make sure it's definitely right and make sure my ruler is lined up at the bottom and at the top. Once I've checked it, I can go along with my rotary cutter and take off the excess that I don't need and that off cut is going to be saved. Now you can vary the effect of this pattern. It's got little flecks of green and I want my flecks to run vertically because I want them to look like grass. Now if I was wanting them to look like fur or scales I might choose to have them running horizontally but I just need to make sure that my flex are pointing in the direction that is going to be at the top of my panel. So I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees because although I'm cutting bottom to top I'm actually cutting left to right. When I finally piece my panel together the flex of green will be pointing this way and will run top to bottom. Now this piece I want to be 8 centimetres by 20 centimetres. So I've got my 5 here, 6, 7, 8, and I'm just going to line my ruler up top and bottom. And before I cut, I'm going to count again. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8 at the top. And so now I can cut across my piece. And once again, that off cut goes into my box and... I'm going to keep it safe. So I want to put in my seam allowances now. So I'm just going to flip my piece over so that I'm marking the back. And I want a one centimetre seam allowance. So I've got my heat erase pen here. I'm going to make sure my block is lined up. Make sure my ruler is lined up in the right place. 
and I'm just going to draw my line. This is going to guide my stitching. I'm going to do exactly the same on the blue. So count my one centimetre seam allowance and mark it. Now I want to line up my two pieces so that my seam allowances are marked at the same side. And I've learnt because the last time we did this, I put my pins along the line and they moved and I had some overlaps to deal with. So I'm going to put my pins perpendicular to the line that I'm going to stitch this time. And it saves all that puckering up that you get when you put pins in and hopefully will create less movement. So I've got a piece of my polyester thread and I'm just going to back stitch this in place just like we did back in week three. If you aren't sure about back stitch I will link a tutorial in a card at the top of the screen but we basically bring our needle up, go back one stitch length and then come forward two stitch lengths so that there's now a gap in between our working thread and the previous stitch and then we go back to the end of that previous stitch and then forward two stitch lengths back one stitch length to meet the previous stitch and we just carry on like that all the way across to the other side of our panel. When you've stitched all the way along you just need to open out that seam so I'm just putting the panel face down and I'm just splitting up those seams and I'm just going to finger press it for now. I'll press it off camera. It's better to iron it really before you start adding any embellishment. But if I just turn it over and press it flat you can see you get a really precise neat finish in the join of those two blocks. So I've pressed it and I've put in my seam allowance again. You can see here that this edge is just slightly off. It's just slightly imprecise. So I've used the lines on my cutting mat again to make sure that all the seam allowances create a square in the middle that's 18 centimeters square. So the seam allowance on the green on the right hand side is slightly narrower than it should be. But when I piece all these blocks together, it will all come right. So my seam is pressed open. It's nice and flat. And this week we're going to create a bird. We're going to scatter some garden birds across our quilt and I wanted to start with a robin partly because it's winter and it's one of the birds that's still around but it's my most regular visitor in my own garden. It's the bird that I see most often. I thought it'd be nice to feature him on our quilt. So I've got a template for this and this is called Bird One. It's available on our website. I'll put the address at the bottom of the screen but I'll put a direct link in the description below as well. It costs £1 to download it, it's just a nominal charge just to help me fund keeping this channel going and making these videos. You might notice that there are some dotted lines on the pattern and that's there deliberately. I'll explain why in the next stage. Now you should notice that if you line up your 20cm quilt block the outer line is the size of the block and the line across the middle of the template is where your grass should be. So if you're in any doubt, just measure it on your template and that will give you the measurements. Just make sure you add your seam allowance. Hopefully you can see through. I can. But the first thing I'm going to do is trace the pattern onto the fabric and this is going to help me place the pieces that I'm going to add. I'm using my water-based pen here because I'm going to be using some bond web and I don't want to be constantly redrawing my pattern so I'm just going to put it in in water raised pen and that will mean I only have to draw it once. That's going to help me when I come to attach my pieces. So now I need my bond web and I'm going to trace the different pieces 
that we are going to stick on. So I'm going to start with my sun. I had happened to have my circle template handy. It's a 3.2 centimeter circle. So rather than just freehand it, I'm going to use my template and I'm going to mark it with a Y because that one is going to be yellow. Now the trick with Bondaweb is that it's going to reverse anything you create and so we need to flip our pattern and the way I'm going to do this, I've got my light box here and I'm just going to flip my pattern over and this way I've got a reverse image of my bird. So let's start with the beak, I can tuck it into this little space that's going to go onto my yellow fabric and I'm just going to draw around that as accurately as I can. Make sure that you've got the glue side of the bond web down and that you're drawing your pieces onto the paper. And I'm just putting a little Y to remind me that that's going to be yellow. So now I'm going to do the face and the chest of the bird. And this is why I've got the dotted lines, because this is going to be in red. So when I trace my, onto my bond web, I've got a complete shape rather than having to guess where the lines are going to go. And I'm just going to mark in where the beat's going to sit. And mark it with an R for red. Then I want the tummy of the bird. This is going to be white and so I can trace around that piece as well. Now if you want to, where your colours are joining, you can add a little bit of overlap. I'm just going to do it here just so that there's no background showing in between the pieces of my bird. Only a couple of millimetres, you don't need very much, just as a little fail safe really. And now we're going to do the main body of the bird, the head and back. Marked in a W to remind me this is going to be white and then I can trace my final piece. Just trying to be as accurate as I can so that my pieces are going to line up. I'm not going to do the wing just yet. I'm going to copy my wing onto normal copy paper. So I want a wing template that's just on normal paper because we're going to do something slightly different with that. I only need to do it once because I can flip that template. So now I'm going to cut roughly around my shapes. I tend not to throw away any bond web, even really small pieces, because as you've just seen with the beak, you never know when you're going to need a really tiny piece. So I do just have a little box full of bond web scraps. And now I can iron my pieces onto the fabric. So I want the wrong side of my fabric up. And I'm just ironing the fabric first, just so that I don't set any creases into my applique. So I want my sun and beak, which is going to go on yellow. And I just put the glue side down, paper side up, and I'm just going to hold my iron in place for about 10 seconds. I'm holding it still, not moving it around because I don't want to move my piece. So that can go to one side. Let's bring in my piece of brown and I can put that one on. So again, glue side down onto the wrong side of the fabric. And just press it in place. I've just got a little crumple there, so I'm, I'm going to ease that out before I hold it down fully. That's my brown and I get my red, make sure I've got the wrong side again. And that's my bird's face.
and then finally I just want a piece of white this one's quite crumpled as well so just trying to work out which is the back and which is the front because they do look very similar I'm just ironing a little bit of that flat and then I can put my last piece attach the bonder web and we're ready to start cutting out precisely so I'm going to keep my ironing pad handy because we're going to build this bird like a jigsaw puzzle so let's start with the sun I'm using my paper scissors because I am cutting through paper and I want to cut out my sun first of all and you'll notice that when I'm cutting a circle I barely move my scissors at all they stay at the same angle and I turn the fabric rather than the scissors you just get a much neater finish and I cut slightly beyond where I think I should be stopping and that will make sure I've got a round edge I'm just going to keep that to one side because it's still got the beak on it and I tear my fabric ever so slightly it just gives you a little edge to get hold of and then I can peel my backing off to reveal the glue and because we've marked our pattern in water erase pen I can iron over it without losing my guideline so I'm just going to set that in place I'm putting the glue side down so now the right side of the fabric is up and holding my iron over it just for a few seconds to fuse it this is where the magic happens you might be wondering why we flipped our template so I'm just going to cut out my bird body shape and I'm trying to be really precise now cutting on the lines so the reason we reverse the pattern is because this is the side that's going to go down on the fabric so when we turn it over now it's the right way around if we had just traced our pattern our bird would be facing to the right and I want it facing into the quilt it's going to be over on the right hand side of the quilt and so I want it facing into the quilt that's why we it matters that it's facing to the left so I'm lining up my piece now with the lines that I've drawn onto my fabric my backing fabric and I'm getting it as precise and exact as I can just nudging that around and then I can set it with my iron so again holding it down for about 10 to 15 seconds just to make sure that glue has properly fused to the background I've taken away some of my seam allowance there <laughs> so now we're going to add the tummy so again I'm just peeling off the paper backing and I want to line it up as closely as I can to the outline if you've traced your pattern precisely it should just work the place to make sure it's lined up is just at the bottom there where the tummy meets the underside of the body just make sure that those two corners are meeting and we set that in place and then add the face and breast of the bird, the red fabric so again that should hopefully line up really precisely so that you can get a nice match and again we're going to set that in place I do think he's looking very cute <laughs> so finally we've got this tiny little beak piece and just take your time so that it, it is quite fiddly but just go slowly and you should find that it's okay and I just want to line that up making sure that it's exactly where it's supposed to be I just want the points to line up with the edge of the bird's face and 
and then we can just fuse that as the last piece. So now I just want to put back in the eye detail because I've obviously covered it over and it just slots in where the head piece, the face of the bird just goes up. So there's a, it's almost like there's a little curve for it. You can always trace your pattern again. So I'm just marking where that eye is going to go and I can't quite see through this green fabric it's just too dense for me to be able to see through so I'm just copying my pattern to mark in where the feet of the bird need to be. So there's our robin and now we're ready to add some surface embroidery. So I've got two strands of red here and because it's quite a lively design with lots of patterns and busyness going on. I don't want to over complicate it with the stitching. You could do whatever you like if you're using plainer fabrics, you could use blanket stitch or you could do feather stitch or whatever floats your boat really but I'm just going to do a simple running stitch. So I've come in just inside the red fabric and my focus here is to just keep my stitches really even and even space in between them just so that it looks really neat and careful and like I keep saying there is no rush with this quilt we want to make a really beautiful heirloom piece so take your time make it as perfect as, as it can be for you there we go I've just stitched around the outside of that red piece and I'm going to do the same with each of the pieces on the bird and then we'll come back. So I've stitched all of my bird pieces down. You can see that if I bring it up close, you should just be able to see those stitches there. I wanted to do something a little bit different with the sun. So I thought we could use stitching to create some rays. Now again, there's lots of stitches that you could use for this, but I thought I could use a blanket stitch. Now we used blanket stitch back in week two, but I will link a tutorial at the top of the screen. I'm going to work this in a circle and you could work this so that the verticals of the stitch come into the sun towards the center. And you could then have sort of almost pie wedges going into the center of the sun. But I'm actually going to do it the opposite way. So I'm going to have the verticals of the stitch coming out like sun rays. So I'm coming up just inside the sun piece and I'm imagining a rectangle this time because I want my stitches to be a bit longer. So I've got my imaginary rectangle here and I want to come down diagonally from top right to bottom left. And I'm going to take my needle back through the fabric there. So now I'm on the blue and then I'll rock my needle back so that it's coming up just inside the yellow circle again and inside that loop of working thread that's looped round. And I'm going to pull through, pull in the direction of the stitch. You've got to be really careful here that you don't pull it too tight because if you do you will gather up the fabric so you want it you want to make sure that it's sitting flat. So it might take a little bit of trial and error and loosening of stitches just to make sure that your tension's right for this piece. So once you've got your first couple of stitches in it, it'll, it'll feel okay, you'll have got your eye in. So I want to go a little bit further around and I'm going to go in on the blue again and hook my needle back up so that it comes out on the sun inside the loop of thread. And again, I'm just going to work my stitch so that the fabric is sitting flat. Now you're going to have to radiate these stitches, otherwise they'll look odd. You, you can't do them all square. You've got to keep your stitches angled slightly as you work your way around, like the hands of a clock. And you'll end up with 
a sort of line of the horizontals of the stitch forming a circle on the sun and then the verticals of the stitch forming sun rays going off into the blue background. So once we've got back to the start we're just going to make a stitch that connects our last stitch to our first and pull through and then I'm just going to hop over the loop of thread that I've caught and take my needle back through to the back of the fabric and then I can finish it off on the back and it looks like there's a ridge there it really isn't it's just shadows when you can always just pull on the stitches a little bit to loosen out the tension but when I iron that it will be completely flat so now I'm going to put the legs in and I'm going to work these in chain stitch so we've used this stitch before as well but we're going to bring our thread out right at the edge of the bird's body I'm going to loop our thread around and take our needle back down where that thread first came up and I just need to make sure that I'm keeping that seam open and flat on the back so you might have to flip backwards and forwards a little bit. I'm going to pull through my thread making sure that, that I've caught that loop that I've made and then we just create our new stitch so down where the thread came out, up a little way along inside the loop and pull through. And again we just want to make sure that the tension is right and isn't causing puckering on our quilt block. So round in a loop and down and bring your thread up inside the loop. So we just need a few chain stitches to create the leg and I'm just going to back stitch the feet so I'm just following the lines of the feet in back stitch to just put those details in. I'm using my dark brown thread here which I think is anchor 380 and I've got two strands again. So now we're going to work on the wing and I've brought back in my scrap of brown here and I want to position my wing piece so that I can draw around it leaving a bit of a border so you can see I'm away from the edge there. I'm just tracing around the outside of that template that I cut earlier. We're going to make a three dimensional wing here so this will stand away from the fabric. If you wanted to you could just cut out a piece and bond web it on but I thought we could do something a little bit more fun. So I'm going to cut around now leaving a border all the way around. Border's about half a centimetre. I could choose either the white or the red but I thought it would be fun to have a bit more red, another pop of red. So I want to cut another wing piece but I want to flip my template because this is going to go back to back with the brown piece that I've just cut out. So again I'm drawing around it and then cutting about half centimetre border. So I'm going to start by putting these right sides together and just roughly lining up the outlines. I've got my polyester sewing cotton here and I'm going to back stitch around that line. So I'm just following the lines on the brown and just stitching all the way around and we're going to stop with a couple of centimetres left in our outline. I'm going to trim back the fabric so that they line up. I want to take out a bit of bulk. I don't want too much fabric overhanging. 
and then I'm going to cut across the tip just making sure that I'm not cutting the actual stitching and the thread and then I want to go around the curve putting in little snips so I'm snipping just up to the stitching that I've just put in I want to be really careful not to actually cut the stitches now what this is going to do is allow that extra fabric to fold in on itself inside the wing so that I get a nice flat neat turn through now I can open it up now I've put all my notches in I'm going to turn my wing through so I'm just going to put a little knot in the thread just so that the seam doesn't open up as I'm stitching it wouldn't matter so much on a bigger piece but this is quite small I'm just opening out that hole that we've left and just pushing through the excess fabric I've got my scissors closed just to push into the points to make sure the wing tip is poked right through into a neat point and that the curve is fully pushed through and now I'm going to press it so I'm going to press the outer seam first of all and the tip and then I want to tuck in the seam allowance on the opening so that it sits inside the bird so I want to fold over those edges and again I'm using my scissors to just help me poke those sides in and then I'm going to press it again and that's going to help me to sew up that opening without having any visible stitches. So I'm just pressing that flat. Now I'm going to close up that gap and we're going to use a ladder stitch here. So this is going to give us a completely invisible closure. I'm coming out on the brown side so I want to hop over to the red side and take my needle in directly across from where my thread's coming out and then I'm going to slide my the point of my needle along that fold that we've just ironed in a little way and bring my needle back out again so it's passing underneath that fold like that and then I can pull through. Now I'm going to hop over again across to the brown, so directly side by side with where the threads just come out on the red. And I'm going to tuck my needle into that fold again and hook a little bit of brown fabric in and come out. And then I hop across to the red, slide my needle inside that fold and bring it back out again and then hop across to the brown and we just work backwards and forwards like that all the way along and that will give us a completely invisible closure on that open part of the wing. And when we get to the end we can just finish off our thread and we have a really neat wing so now I'm going to line it up onto my bird. I've got the little wing tip there just to help me line up where the wing needs to go. And I've got a couple of strands of my brown thread again. And I'm just going to use an applique stitch or a whip stitch just to catch the, the very end, the shoulder part of the wing onto my background. So I've just come up on the wing and I'm going down just through the background and then moving along a little bit, coming up through the wing and then going back down just on the background. And these stitches will be almost invisible and we'll just hold our wing in place. So now we've got our wing that lifts up and it's a little bit flappy just to add a little bit of fun to our quilt and add a little bit of interest so that's essentially our block done you could leave it there i just wanted to add 
a few finishing touches. We've got no eye, so I just want to stitch that in. I'm going to use a blanket stitch wheel. You could satin stitch it if you want to. So we did a blanket stitch wheel when we did the sun, but we're going to reverse it. And so all our stitches are going to go into the center of the eye. So I'll come up on the outside edge, take my needle back down at the center of the eye and back out at the edge, just making sure that my thread is going underneath my needle. Then we rotate around a little bit, go back in at the center and out at the edge. So these stitches are going to radiate out and I'm working them very close together so that the red fabric doesn't show through. We just keep going like that all the way around. There's our eye. And the last thing I want to add is some flowers. So on the pattern I've put in some circles and that's just to give some placement suggestions for some flowers you could add flowers in whatever way you like you could add some sequins you could add beads i'm going to add some lazy daisy stitches similar to the ones that we used back in week three i want those to sort of be echoed around the quilt so if you remember in week three we added all our little lazy daisies alongside the rickrack and I thought it would be nice to feature them again. So I've just got my light box. I'm going to sketch in the positioning of the flowers. I've got my heat erase pen here. And I can't see very well, but I can see just about well enough to see where those circles are. I can always lift up my fabric and double check if I'm not sure. And to make a lazy daisy, we're going to do some detached chain stitches. So I'm going to bring up my needle in the centre of the circle, loop my thread around and go back down at the centre of the circle. Then I'm going to bring my needle out a little way out on the outside edge of the circle and catch the loop that I made. Then I'm going to hop over the edge of that loop and take my needle back through just to put a little anchor stitch to hold that chain stitch in place. Then I come up at the centre again and make another loop and this time I'm working a little bit around the circle. So we're going to make five or six detached chains all starting from the same point, working them round in a circle at slightly different angles to create the petals of a little flower. And then I'm going to come up in the centre again and add a little French knot to form the centre of my flower. So bring my needle up, hold my working thread under tension, put my needle against the working thread and wrap the thread over the needle twice and then take my thread back through. So I'm just going to dot some of those across the grass and then we'll come and have a look. So here's our finished block. We've got our robin with its flappy wing. And we've got a little floral arrangement in the grass. We've used loads of skills in this one. It's been a little bit longer video than normal. But I just love this block. This makes me so happy. If you have enjoyed making this, please do give us a like. It really helps other people find our videos. It helps our channel hugely. Do share your pieces at hashtag FSH23quilt. And so that we can see all of our robins together, you could also add hashtag FSH23quilt6. If you've enjoyed this video and want something similar, I will link something at the bottom and I'll put a video up here that's best for you. If you want to subscribe, click on our logo down here. It makes it really easy for you. And do remember to turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.